invited Purdue Northwest out today to talk to you about what we have partnered with them called the Indiana College Corps. And with that conversation is going to kind of come the tips and tricks for you to navigate high school in order to really get ahead in college. I know that sounds kind of scary right now. But that's why they're here and they are going to fill your brains with a whole bunch of information, but we are always here to answer questions if you have it later. So this is Rachel and this is Katie. Have at it. Thank you. I'm sure no one's here for the German celebration. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any leader hosen or I don't know what else I have. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, as uh, Ms. Selkar mentioned, we're from Purdue Northwest. We work with our concurrent enrollment program there. So I'm Katie Bowers. My title, and I will explain more what this means in a second, um, is Coordinator of Academic Accreditation. And I'm Rachel Myers, Coordinator of Students and School Partnerships. So, um, a big part of what we want to do today is not just talk about the Indiana College Corps, which is important and is something you're going to be hearing more about, but just to make sure you know who we are, what we do, and how we're here to support you. So as I mentioned, my title, hi, very wordy, come on in. I <laughs> see anywhere. Hi. Um, is Coordinator of Academics and Accreditation. It's a long way to say that I work with our accreditation, which we are nationally accredited, our assessment systems, I work with our teachers, I work with our um, assessment collections, and our initiatives like Indiana College Corps. So just a very fancy way to say that I kind of do all the backside of the house stuff that I enjoy, but is a lot less exciting than the stuff Rachel does. Tell what I do. So you can see, like I said, students and school partnerships, I give Katie a hard time all the time. I get to do the fun stuff. I get to do the field trips, the outreach initiatives, games, because we're going to I brought some swag to give away. Hi. I get some games to play later. Uh, but you see kind of like what I do, events on campus, that sort of good stuff. Hi. So that is what we do. And together we really do comprise the Office of Partnerships and Outreach, which is where the current enrollment program is housed at AW. So um, we kind of split the responsibilities in that way so that we can really support our students, our teachers, our schools, all of those pieces. All right. So where are of the kids in here where are my freshmen at freshmen right now this year okay sophomores okay so like i said i have well i have three teenage boys myself now i have a freshman in college i have two in high school and as with katie and i working in this we get phone calls all the time from parents um and we realize there's a lot of unknown about this right so do me a favor, rate, if we're, we're going to um, say some statements here. Raise your hand if you've ever thought that to yourself, or maybe you heard someone say it. Okay, so if you ever thought to yourself, what's the difference between AP and dual credit? Your hands in the air, okay, good. You were in the right spot? Okay, next one here. Why my student or I should take PW credit, credit when I'm going to Ball State, let's say? We hear that all the time, right? Why should I even take it? We are an IU family, you know, through and through, so we're going to talk about that. Okay, next one. Why, well, I'll let you talk about this yeah. one. Um, so why should my student or I even worry about the Indiana dual credit options when my kid's going to Iowa, go Hawks, <laughs> or any other out-of-state school, right? Why are you caring about all these Indiana dual credit schools? We part with IU, we part with Army Tech. I'm going to Wisconsin. I'm going to go be a Badger. Mm -hmm. Okay, there were some people here. Next one. Have you ever thought to yourself, why am I student or I should take AP dual credit anyway? I'm just trying to enjoy high school. I don't want any added stress. Where are the kids at? The kids are like, uh-huh, yeah, I hear you. Okay? And then I think there's one more. And what's the big deal with dual credit anyway? Have you guys thought that, right? You've heard a lot more probably recently, right? I know parents in here, I know there was like nothing when I was in high school, right? So this is a brand new to us, not new to the high school kids. But that's what we're going to talk about, what the big deal is anyway. So one of the, as I mentioned, I'm a big data person, I'm the behind the scenes nerd that loves my spreadsheets and my accreditation stuff, um, so I can't have a presentation without a little bit of data. I promise this isn't a lecture, but a little bit of data. So um, of the 2018 Indiana cohort of graduates, this is the last data we were able to find from the state, over 60% of those students earn dual credit and another 19% earn AP. So that combination of people, there's a huge percentage of high school students in Indiana who are leaving with some college credit, whether that be dual credit or AP. Um, the state has a very lofty goal that they're going to really start promoting 
post-secondary credentialing of some capacity, which is going to be an associate's or bachelor's degree, by 2025, they want 60% of the population, the adult population, to have some post-secondary credential. And lastly, and this is why we think dual credit is important, is because this, the research shows that dual credit participation, which is taking college classes while you're still in high school, with your high school teachers who you know, where you're comfortable, but the research shows that dual credit leads to a higher matriculation in college, so you're more likely to go to college if you take dual credit. Retention in college, you're more likely to stay in college if you take dual credit, and a higher time to degree completion. So the average time for a degree completion in college is four to six years. I was five years. Uh, I was a lot longer than that. <laughs> We know that college isn't just a four-year program anymore like it used to be, but participation in dual credit it does tend to keep people within that four to six year range because they've taken credits that are hopefully helping towards their major. So that's why we think it's important. It's just a chance to get that college credit experience, earn those credits before you actually leave for college. Can I talk about your success? Sure. Um, so my seniors um, in concurrent enrollment, we have about 3,000 with all of our high schools. We always give them a um, senior exit survey. And you can kind of see what they said they thought about CEP classes, like, you know, they developed more realistic expectations about college, all that stuff. I'm not going to read it all to you. But you see over here, um, we did compare our students at PNW, so our undergrad kids, who did have CEP credit in high school, compared to those undergrad students at PNW who did not have CEP credits at all. And so you can see the GPA, the retention rates, and the graduation rates were a lot higher. So it just, good, again, shows everything that Katie was just talking about is true. We're not just saying this to try and butter you guys up. Nothing like that. Um, like I said, that just shows matriculation rates to in one box, but everything else that Katie was talking about is right there. And it would be higher if we didn't have acronyms that nobody else knows. So CEP is concurrent enrollment program credits, and we are gonna define all of that for you later. So just keep in mind as you hear us say, dual credit, concurrent enrollment, all those things, we're gonna make sure those make sense to you here in just a minute. So, how can I earn college credit while in high school? This is exactly what I was just talking about. <clears throat> Concurrent enrollment is a subset of dual credit. You've heard us say dual credit. I'm sure you've heard dual credit in the news. You've heard dual credit just going about school if you have older kids. Dual credit is the umbrella term for any way to earn college credit while in high school. Concurrent enrollment, which is what Rachel and I work in specifically, CEP, is those courses that are taken here at Crown Point with a high school instructor who's been approved by PNW to teach that class, but they register for, uh, as a PNW student. They're admitted to PNW as a PNW student. They are generating a Purdue transcript the second they register for that course. So that's concurrent enrollment, again, is specifically here in your high school taking those classes with someone that we've approved to teach that class. Um, Crown Point partners with more than just PNW, so we put a few up there. I know they've got a pretty extensive list, but again, concurrent enrollment isn't just with PNW. It can be with IU, it can be with Ivy Tech, um, it can be with Vincennes. There's any higher ed institution really can offer concurrent enrollment classes. AP, again, another acronym, Advanced Placement. Advanced Placement is a course offered here in the high school, but you don't see anywhere. Come on in. Um, you don't register for it like you would a college course. So you're not, you don't have to do the whole PNW admissions application, the whole registration piece, but you are taking an AP class here in high school with your AP teacher, and at the end you have to take and pass an AP exam to get the college credit. So you don't just get the college credit in the current moment, you get it, you're making that transcript the second you sign up. In AP, it all is dependent on taking and passing that test at the end. And then lastly, and this is not something that as many students do, but it is an option, is coming to the actual campus to take classes. So I mentioned dual credits and umbrella term. It includes any of those ways you might earn those college credits. So concurrent enrollment, specifically here at the high school, but dual credit can also include coming to a college campus to take classes while you're in high school. So again, we have to make sure we cover all those acronyms because we are very familiar with them. We use them really easily, and we know that not everybody knows those. The main event, the Indiana College Corps. <laughs> How many here have heard of the Indiana College Corps certificate? Just show of hands. A couple of people. I mean, quite frankly, I'm happy to see even one hand because this is literally, especially in Northwest Indiana, becoming really, really talked about. Um, if you go further south, you might hear more about it, but up here, it's still kind of rolling out. So the Indiana College Corps is based on a Senate act from a few years ago 
that really focuses on institutions offering a core of general education classes. So essentially, if you go to any public institution in the state and most of the private schools, there's some general education you have to take. And general education are going to be your classes like American government, composition, speech, American history, right, math. And all of those courses that when I went to college X amount of years ago that even I had to take, right? I had to take a speech class when I went to college in 2000. Um, so those are classes that are going to transfer. They're going to be across the board wherever you go. Um, so the state requires that every institution offer a general ed core that's 30 credit hours. The institutions have a little bit of leeway about what they offer within that, but it's pretty prescribed based on the Senate Act. Um, and so it really focuses on taking courses that are going to be general ed courses, highly transferable, 30 credit hours of gen ed courses. Oh no. Sorry. This fancy <laughs> course. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so the Indiana College Course Certificate is 30 credit hours of college credits. So this is why we made sure to talk about all the ways you can earn college credits, because it's not just dual credit. Um, you do have to complete the majority of those 30 hours with one partner. So we've partnered with Crown Point, so we're that primary partner. So 18 of those 30 credit hours have to come from PNW. The other 12 credit hours can come from any of those other partners we talked about, Ivy Tech, IU, can come from AP. Um, you kind of fill in those remaining hours however you want to. And you have to take at least one course from each core area. I have the official eight titles on the next slide. But I wanted to put them here in like the terminology that we actually use with students, which is the core areas include a speech, a writing, an English class, a math class, a science class, a humanities class, and a social sciences class. So again, those classes that everyone has to take, regardless of where they go, they can go to Ball State, they can go to IU, they can go to Purdue, any of the Purdue classes or campuses, they're going to have to take at least one of each of these classes. These are the technical titles, quantitative reasoning. That's math. Um, speaking and listening, that's speech, written communication, humanistic, which is the humanities, scientific, and social behavioral. Um, one thing I didn't really focus on a lot because folks don't take advantage of this a lot, but it is an option, is also CLEP testing. CLEP testing is also included in this. Um, this is not the primary way students earn that credit, but it is another option for earning college credit. So the reason we like to come out and talk to you about this early is because you're just starting to explore whether you want to take these classes or not. It all seems very overwhelming. Um, so we want to make sure you understand just why the state is pushing this college course certificate because it seems like a really confusing way to just do what you were already going to do. <laughs> you were already going to probably take advantage of some dual credit classes, right? Like, why make this more complicated? <laughs> the focus of the state, the, the intention behind all of this is intentionality. They don't want you coming to college was 60 credit hours, which sounds great, right? 60 credit hours, I'm coming in as a junior, I'm going to graduate soon, but those classes don't transfer. So the state's goal is really that the classes you're taking here are really going to help you progress in your major and progress in your program and not just be classes that aren't going to help you. So I put the example here, it's kind of like boiling it down to a really low level, but a speech class, which again, I had to take in 2002 when I went to college, um, that's a very consistent class, no matter where you go, public, private, wherever, um, in-state, out-of-state. My school was a small private liberal arts school, so I went to Moines, Iowa, and I had to take a speech class. So we know that that's a class that you're going to have to take. A music appreciation class may or may not help your major. So the state's goal is that your focus is going to be on those classes that they can say pretty definitively are going to help. And the way they define that is it's a priority course. We know it's going to transfer. We know it's going to help you out wherever you're going or it's a non-priority course, they can't say for sure it's going to help you, they can't control how the school's going to take that, so they're not going to really emphasize those classes as much. I'm going to say something, like I said, parents call us all the time, right? And so that's why we did feel like we wanted to put this bullet in here, because, you know, I'm thinking of a chemistry major. The chemistry major is like, well, well, I was told to take music in high school because it was dual credit, right? Some of you kids might be like, I don't believe this. And then they're like, then the parents call us, and they're like, why did I pay for this music non-priority course if it doesn't even go toward it? major. So that's why being so intentional, we love this because, you know, the record number brought into P&W is 61 credits that someone had. That wasn't was, just a random number. It was a trimester <laughs> school, Laporte, also in the DAC, but, you know, one of our Laporte kids came on over, 61 credits back when they had trimesters, and 
I think maybe 20 of them, you know, so all of that money. And so that's why I'm very happy that, you know, the state's being more intentional and everyone's teaming up on this. And this is also not just a random example. I used to advise at Purdue Northwest for the elementary ed major, which is a very prescriptive major. Engineering, nursing, a lot of those majors tell you, you have to take X, Y, and Z. And I would have students coming in all the time who would say, well, I took this class. What's it going to count as? Hopefully with good experience for you, but it's not going to help your major, right? So um, that was one that I got a lot because it's a great class and we do not want to take away from that experience of, of learning for anybody. But we do also want to make sure that students aren't coming with those 61 credits and not able to graduate at the time when they think they're going to graduate on. So um, yeah, we always like to make sure that you know that the state's doing this with a lot of good intentions behind it. It just seems like a very complicated way to do what you're already going to do. Um, but it's just really kind of making it into something that you can nicely take and transfer wherever you go. So again, that intentionality piece, huge. They want to make sure that you're taking classes along the way that are going to help you. Um, those highly transferable classes. And then at the end, so your senior year, you've taken all these classes, all these AP tests, you send all that to PW and you do an actual degree audit. And our registrar's office says you achieve this certificate, you get a certificate from PW that can be sent then to any college that you go to that says, I completed the Indiana College Core. So Purdue has an Indiana College Core certificate. You say, I completed my Gen Ed Core, I'm going to go to Ball State, and they're going to say, great, you completed your Gen Ed Core. So the goal is that it's going to go as a block instead of them looking at kind of piecemeal, oh, you took this class, you took this AP, you took this, whatever. So that's the goal is at the end it's going to make all of that transferring of all those dual credits, all those AP tests, all that stuff you did just a little bit easier. Um, before I do this, any questions? I know I've talked a lot. So I have a much older son. He went here and then he went to Illinois, University of Illinois, Champaign. And he took dual credit here and, you know, P&W, whatever. And when he went to Illinois, even science classes, and he was a science major, none of them were, like, he had all these electives. So then it kind of messed him up because then he went and he he couldn't take any electives because all these dual credits gave him elective credits. So is that, and again, he's much older than this one. So that's changed now? So I want to say yes, but you said he went to an Illinois school? Yeah. That's always going to be the tricky thing. So I don't want to try to sugarcoat that this is going to save that issue. And so this is the Indiana College Core. The goal is that it's going to make transferring amongst Indiana schools a lot easier. Out of state schools, it is really hit or miss. It is really hit or miss. Even if you're at night, for example, at another school, the dad raises his hand and goes, Can I say something? Sure. He's like, I just want everyone in here to know my kid went to University of Kentucky and they accepted all 27 credits. Right, his major. And then we have someone, we had someone go to South Dakota last year, and they're like, before they decide whether or not they want to award this credit, they want to see a copy of the syllabus for the English 104 class. And they send it. And so, of course, our office says, sure, no problem. Then they ended up awarding the credit. So, really, it is. It's hit or miss. We tell the kids, if any of you kids in here think about going out of state or parents, you know, we always tell them, you know, call the out of state school, see, will you accept this credit before you pay for it? Okay. If you have students who take classes with us, they will see us come in and they will hear me say over and over again, because I advised for so long, just call that school and talk to an advisor. Yeah. That's literally their job. They're not going to get mad or annoyed that someone who doesn't go to school there is calling them. Just call ahead and ask those questions, though, because that's what they're there to do. But if they can answer that now while you're in high school and make that transition just a little bit easier, um, so take, the, take the 10 minutes to bug them, send them an email, because you want to make sure that you're making that transition as smooth as possible. Now, the hope, you said he took science and was a science major. That's where schools might get a little more particular, right? Like, we want you to have taken our classes, but we'll give you elective credit, and now you have no flexibility in your schedule. <laughs> so the hope is because this is just focusing on those kind of basic, basic gen ed courses, that it doesn't also do that for the students, just like mess up their whole plan of study. Um, we just met with all of the PW department chairs literally last Friday, and we told them, this exists, it's coming whether it's from us or not. Think about your plans of study and how to make it easier for students to come in with it because that's what schools really need to be doing. So 
hopefully we'll see more of the institutions across the state looking at, at it that way too. Good question though, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Do the grades also transfer over to affect your GPA? It's a great it? question. Yeah, <laughs> again, if you're staying within the Purdue system, whether it be Fort Wayne, IBUI, IBUI, West Lafayette, the GPA does stay and the credits. If you go anywhere else, IU, Ball State, Indiana State, just the courses go, no GPA. Because at Purdue, once you take a PNW class, you're considered a Purdue student. And so it's one student, one record. So, you know, someone at one of our concurrent enrollment kids here is taking a class. If, this is a different topic really, but let's say they get a C minus, that's academic probation within the Purdue system, even at West Lafayette, you're on. So yeah, so within the Purdue system, grades stay. Outside the Purdue system, you start fresh. <laughs> that's we're going to jump into our normal routine, but we do a lot of presentations. Once a, when we have classes with different high schools, we come out and do what's called PW Jump Starts, and we play bad cop, good cop. I always get to be the boring behind the scenes spreadsheet girl and the bad cop, and that's because of my advising experience. Um, but yeah, I mean, if there's this Purdue student, they could be on academic probation with Purdue while they're in high school. So we come out and make sure the students know all of this when they're taking those classes because it sounds really scary. It's really not. We have a lot of supports and things, but that's a very real thing that, that families need to think about. So, oh, I just wanted to show you, that because I've been talking about things in a lot of theoreticals, if you want to go to that kind of table, um, this is what a college core plan of study might look like for a student at Crown Point. So this is the first year that the state has opened it up to kind of different institutions starting this. We've been working with Crown Point because we do a lot of credits with them. Um, and we had a few students complete the college core certificate this year, but just because they've been taking these classes. Again, this isn't something that's necessarily going to be really hard for you to plan for. You have to put a lot of thought into um, literally a, a handful of students met the requirements just by virtue of what they were doing. Um, but this is just kind of a little snapshot of what it would look like. So. I mentioned those six categories, writing, speaking, math, science, social studies, and humanistic. And then the remaining credits can be kind of from anywhere else. Generally, most college classes are three to four credit hours. Three credit hours for your general kind of lecture classes, the speech, the histories, things like that. Maybe four credit hours if it's a lab course. So you can see that, um, actually my math is wrong in here. Don't, don't say it's like a whole job, don't talk about that. Um, but so you can see how an uh, actual Crown Point student met all these requirements. So they took the composition course with PNW, the speech course with PNW, an econ course which met that math requirement with PNW, um, a science course not with PNW, a political science course with us, an English course with us, a history, a couple of history courses with us, AP Psych, so they were able to take and pass that test, another English course not with us, that went for 30, and then all the ones with the asterisk were the ones that met that PNW 18 credit hours, and that's how they then met those requirements. So this should say 30 and 21, not 31 and 21. Um, but essentially, again, this was just by nature of what they were already going to take here as a student. So it's it seems like a lot, it looks like a lot, especially if you're a freshman, you're sitting here like, how am I supposed to be a high school student and do all of this? It's very doable, it's just a little bit of planning and knowing that it's something you want to do. <coughs> and then these next slides are just a little bit of an example of what their schedules may have looked like. So what, the, what that student really took their ninth grade year, their 10th grade year, you can see they started getting some of those dual credit classes, their junior year, so some of those science courses now are getting in there. History is an easy one because it's a lot of credit hours because it's two separate courses. And then finally, what they took their senior year. So, just kind of a bit of an example of how they might have met that requirement. Before we start our fun game, what other questions do you have? So, I was kind of late to the meeting. I'm just trying to make sure I'm clear. <coughs> so, they can get the credits, they can either test the dual classes, or if they are in AP, they can test the dual classes, correct? Yep. Yeah, so it's a combination of those things. Um, they just have to meet the, the, the main requirements. It's 30 credit hours of those gen ed classes. Um, they have to meet at least one class from each of the six categories, and at least 18 of the credits have to be from PNW. The other 12 can be from eight other dual credit, AP, whatever else they have taken. 
right, can you go back one slide actually? I just want to, okay, so you freshmen or sophomores in here, are you looking at this schedule right here? Like, oh my gosh, this <laughs> looks terrifying to me, right? I know, I look at this, I'm like, there's no way when I was a senior, again, eons ago, does it happen. And so Katie and I have done this presentation to a couple of our other Indiana College Board partner schools. And a parent, a dad in the audience, raised his hand way up high, and that's why he asked that question that we asked you guys, like, is this real? Can a kid really do this and still survive high school on top of everything else, right? Because you know, kids have so much to do these days. And we're like, yeah. And so a lot of, and I, I know it, as Katie said, it looks terrifying. But a lot of times, and you guys know this, and you kids sitting in here, a lot of times the kids that do the schedule, they're also on the speech and debate team, right? They're the sports people. They know how to multitask everything. Kudos to you guys, because they're, again, I mean, it's just so much different now. So that's where we really did, like we showed this before, a parent was like, there's no way. I mean, he's like, I get it, I get it, but that's why I didn't know if any of you were thinking that when you saw this as well. So I just wanted to point that out. And this is per semester. That is the year. That was the yes, whole, yes. Per semester. Some of those classes are semester courses. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, why that slide looks much more intimidating. <laughs> because the first two, the composition and the literature, they go together to make up a whole year. Right. The government and econ would go together to make right. up a whole year. So really, that schedule could have a study hall put in it. Mm -hmm. Right. Is it, it's actually divided. Yeah. August, December, January, yeah, June. Yeah. Yeah. But it looks right. really overwhelming, which is why I <laughs> think it's important to note that I saw jaws talking, yeah. I saw eyes, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. So, like I said, every time we do a, a little presentation, we gotta do something fun, because I know I don't like getting lecture to the whole time. I'm sure you guys are like, it is 6.30 on a Thursday night. I, you know, I'm sure you guys had some other things you'd rather be doing than listening to Katie and I talk. Um, so, I, if you guys can take out your phones, everyone in here, and go to www.menti.com, and it's going to ask for a code. So go ahead and type that code in. I have, we have some prizes for the win. I've got some t-shirts down here and some, the most amazing socks, and I say this, but I, I promise you, they're the most comfortable socks. i got some pins that kind of match my hair, but you know, right here. So, menti.com. And one six five six one two one nine, and then you go to the next slide because it'll say that the oh oh, oh yeah okay. If you didn't get that code already, it's at the top here too. The one six five six one two one nine. So if you still need it. So as everyone is getting in here, this is like our little word cloud. So when I think of college, one word that comes to mind is. So again, we're just testing everyone's phones, making sure everyone's getting in here. So let's see here. If you're here with your student, don't peek at each other's phones. <laughs> what was the one? Oh, uh, 1656 1219. So let's see here. Exciting. Yes. Money. Yes. <laughs> Katie and I, when we were practicing this today, I wrote in like living on mac and cheese. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. Let's see here. Money, smart, future, loan. I paid off. I was paying off my student loans for a very long time. <laughs> I just got a little twitch behind my right eye just thinking about it. Did you pay them? You didn't get loan forgiveness? <laughs> no. Oh, should have, shouldn't have paid. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get loan forgiveness either. That's why I'm asking. Oh, uh, yeah. No. Sorry. No, that's Sorry okay. Sorry It's okay. Yeah, I know. Stressful sports. Yeah. I was a college athlete as well. And are, are any of you planning on maybe playing in college? What sport? Uh, cross country. Okay, awesome. So yeah, you will definitely have to make sure you're on top of things <laughs> with school because traveling every weekend, you know, it's a lot, but you can do it, I'm sure. Okay, so we got everyone in that we think is getting in here? We got 17, okay. And this is kind of our test slide. If you're yes. not in yet, you can still keep jumping in. This is just a chance to kind of capture and make sure we know oh, yeah, 18 there. now, okay. So how this game works, we're gonna ask you some questions and you get more points the quicker you answer for getting the right answer, okay? All right, oh, 19. Someone's like, don't oh, I want in, I want in. Okay. <laughs> that cost still stayed the biggest one out there. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I won't go anywhere. <laughs> All right, next one, here we go. So again, we're gonna ask. I actually have six questions, I don't know why it's not figuring the last one. Okay, are you guys ready? You guys ready? Everyone's looking at their phones. Okay. 
Enter to start. So if you answer fast, you get more points. Look at your phones. The Indiana College Corps can only be completed with concurrent enrollment classes. Is that true or false? Katie, I'll let you. Um, so yeah, this is one of those pieces that we do think is really important because yeah. it comes back to those definitions and it all gets very confusing. It's, it's kind so, of a trick. It's kind of a little kind tricky. Of a trick. We have to start with kind of a tricky question, make sure everyone's paying attention. Um, so the Indiana <coughs> College core can be completed with concurrent enrollment classes, which is again, the courses being taught that are Purdue classes or Ivy Tech classes or IU classes here in the high school with your high school teachers but it can also be completed with AP credit. So that's why this one's a little bit tricky because we want to just make sure you know that it's not completely dependent on 10 concurrent enrollment classes across the time here. What is CLEP testing? So CLEP is college level exam something or other. It's a test that you can take. Um, we didn't focus on a lot because it's not something we really deal with either, but I know for example, if you come to p &W, every university has this, but you can take these CLEP tests. So when I used to advise for LED, right, it's a huge major, very prescriptive, students would want to get out faster. You can go to our testing center and you can sign up to take the American government test. It's $75 at p and I don't know what it costs at other places. And you could take a, a test, similar to an AP test, it's just the test though, there's no teaching, and you, you test it and you get that credit for it. Mm -hmm. So um, in its essence, the Indiana College Course Certificate allows for CLEP, it allows for AP, those advanced, advanced placement, it allows for concurrent enrollment, which is the class here, it allows for dual credit, which is if you go to an actual college campus, it allows for international baccalaureate, we don't talk about that because we don't really deal with that either, but it allows for all of these different ways of earning college credit, um, and CLEP is one of them. It's a great question. So it's like kind of like our little trick question yeah. <laughs> to see if you were paying attention. And again, just because I feel like we'd be remiss if we didn't make sure you knew all those different ways, right? Because again, they're, it all gets lumped together, but it's all very different. So we just want to make sure you kind of know what you're working with when you're making those plans. Okay, so now I think we're going to have a leaderboard next. So just to show you how this game's going to go. So, leaderboard, and sometimes it gives you goofy names so other you put your names in. Okay, so then you see... Okay, Jacob. Where's Jacob in here? All right, Woo! Jacob. So everyone's out for you now. Okay, you're the leader right now. Okay, so now you see how the game goes. Okay, so next question. Here we go. Okay, look at your phones. And how many post-secondary institutions does Crown Point High School partner with? Is it two, three, four, or five? Okay, everyone's voted. Okay, there we go. Actually is five. So again, P and W, IU, Vincent's, Ivy Tech, USI. U USI. Okay. So actually five. Okay, like some of our schools will only partner with one institution, post-secondary institution. I think another school of ours partners with like seven <laughs> universities. So, okay. Not to get too in the weeds, but the reason this is also important to think about is that you or your, your student might take classes with multiple institutions while you're here. So keep that in mind that you might encounter different experiences depending on those different places. And just don't be confused by that because it, it can seem like Because a lot. <laughs> these two women know this more than anyone. Every university does something different. <laughs> their registration process, their application process, how you send your transcripts to these universities, grades, how you pay, everything, okay? Hi. All right, I think we have a question next. I don't think the leaderboard. I don't think we're gonna see it yet. About you, Jacob. All right. All right, what percentage of Lake County's population has a bachelor's degree? Is it 14%, 50%, 33%, or 65%? So think about this county here. What do you think, how many, people have a bachelor's degree, you think, percent-wise. All right, let's see. Correct answer is 14% of Lake County has bachelor's degrees, which is why that state has really aggressively set that timeline to be like, by 2025, we want 60% of the state to have bachelor's degrees, which is why all these other things are happening. Like, I live in LaPorte County. LaPorte County, I want to say last I knew, it was like 9%. 
and you know, which just south of us is Stark County, which is like 4%. So that's why you hear these, and it's kind of, like I heard you guys like <laughs> gasp when I said this, right? <laughs> All right, Jacob, we're gonna see if you're still in the lead after these. Oh, he doesn't look too sure. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. All right, Nicholas, where's Nicholas? Oh, it's you. It's <laughs> cheating now. Okay. All right. So plant in the game. <laughs> okay, here we go. It's like, I know some of the <laughs> Okay, how many credit hours does a student need in order to earn this Indiana College course certificate? Is it 12, 18, 30, or 40? All right, Katie, we're going to see if they are listening to you. All right, let's see here. Yay! I did it. <laughs> and I think we wanted to throw this one out there again because it can be confusing because of that credit hour piece, right? Like credit hours are calculated very differently on college campuses and they might be in high schools. So 30 credit hours is generally going to be about 10 classes. So um, splitting that up over two to three years is a little bit less intense than thinking about someone taking 30 classes over that same time frame. Okay, and there actually is another question after this again, so you guys have two chances so. Alright, taking the AP exam guarantees college credit. Is that true or false? Alright, everyone's voted. I get really excited to see what you guys see. It's like half and half. It is false. You want to explain this one to you, Katie? So this one's a tricky one, and this is one of those reasons why, again, we like to make sure you kind of know that difference. So when you take a concurrent enrollment course, right, when you take a dual credit class, you register for a university class. You are in that class like anybody sitting up at West Lafayette or Hammond. You're generating those credits, all of those pieces. When you're taking an AP class, you're registered for the course here at Crown Point, but at the end you have to take a test. And the score you get on that test is going to determine whether you're going to get credit for it or not. So, for example, at PW, and again, I just know this from advising, um, if you took any, pretty much any of the AP tests, the minimum score we'd accept is a three. So, for American government, let's say you get a three. For the composition course, if you get a three, you're going to get credit for one class. So three credit hours. But if you get a four or a five, you're going to get credit for two classes, which is six credit hours. So the AP is a lot more um, fluid, I guess, depending on that score. So if you get lower than a three, if you get a two or one, you might not get credit at all. And again, it's all dependent on the institution you're taking it from. And so we, we do have parents call us and like, is there any way we can retake it? You know, my son, his girlfriend broke up with him last night, the night right before he took the AP exam. <laughs> He wasn't just right in the head, he was reading out, and they can't, they can't, right? Yeah, so that's where, that's a big difference between AP and dual credit. So if you're doing the college course certificate with PNW, if you get whatever the PNW score is, so again, for PNW, the minimum is a three almost across the board, sometimes a four will get you more, a five will get you more, you'll get that credit then, sort of on the books with PNW, and you'll get that certificate from PNW. Now again, if you transfer that credit to, in that last presentation, we had someone who was talking about the Ivy Leagues and he was talking about Chicago State and saying how they don't really even like AP at all. I mean, again, it's just so dependent on schools. I wouldn't even presume to speculate on what different schools take. So um, just know that with AP, though, it doesn't always guarantee college credit because it's all dependent on that test at the end. All right, I think there's a leaderboard. I think one more question then. All right, we're skits. Who skits? Okay. All right. Okay. One more question. Let's see here. So, what is the name of PW's mascot? Is it Purdue Pete, Leo the Lion, Don the Mastodon, or Jaws the Jaguar? <laughs> no one's. Feeling down here, huh? Okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Someone felt bad. Oh, so I was like, 
All right, guys. It's a sympathy I got you. vote. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, okay. okay. The correct answer is Leo the lion. When we were in our schools, all the Leo would just go, he goes to increase by one after we said, anyway, let's change the vote. <laughs> Retreat. Um, when we're in the schools doing this with our kids, all the time, we do, you know, because we, we give away our swag and we throw socks and all that kind of stuff. Everyone's always like, it's Purdue P. West, that's West Lafayette. Okay? So West Lafayette, P and W. This is Purdue Fort Wayne. And then IPUI. This is confusing, and again, what we like to kind of throw it out there because when we talk about Purdue one transcript, one university, you're still generating that West Lafayette transcript when you're taking classes with us, but you're going to be a lion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we're going to see a drum roll. Oh, there's no sound. Okay, there is an actual sound up here. <laughs> All right. Oh, enter. Okay. Let's see who ended up winning. Let's see here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. Well, I, yeah. So, Skids, where's your, where's Joanna? Okay, Skids, Joanna, and then, where's Ribbit? Who's Ribbit? Okay. It's a deep name. And then we'll do, we do four. Can't see who this one is. Who's this? We'll do the top five. Who's this? And it's with the L-E. I can't see. Oh. Jacob, you too. Okay. Michelle. Michelle, thank you. You, the top five, come on down here. I've got some t-shirts, i got some socks, i got some pins. Sure. There's a couple different sizes, so. I was going to say, we like doing this because, again, we don't want you guys just sitting here and listening to us all the time. That would be fun a little bit. Just take the next one. Go ahead. Nicholas. <laughs> Front and center, right there. You can take the next one. It, Jake's getting something, so whoever you know who's after. Lisa, where's Lisa? Oh, that's somebody else. Nate's the next Nate. one. Where's Nate? Nate? Oh, you coming out and get something? That's yeah, those bulky socks. <laughs> oh, and there's one pair left for you. All right, so really, the remaining time here is now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. let's see, we really tried, I mean, again, the Cutlass Board Certificate's a big part we want to talk about, but we just want to make sure you also know all those different pieces about dual credit, AP, all those pieces. So we wanted to leave some time at the end just for any, really, any questions you might have. And I'm going to just add one more thing, because like I said, when we were at one of our other schools, we thought we would be in and out in 45 minutes. <laughs> we had parents, like, following us out the door, because they could, because we realized <laughs> parents, they don't know a lot about what's happening now, right? So that's why we made sure we save lots of time for you guys. So do we now go to the counselor to sign up? Because we have already decided that we're going to Purdue Northwest at home. That's the decision. And then we're going to go to Lafayette, you know, junior year. Once we can drive and have a car on campus. So, well, how do we start? How do we start this process? Yeah, you give me your card. Do I contact you? And how do we get this going? We already have decided on our major and everything. Yeah. So tonight, you don't need to worry about Rachel and I quite so much. But I would say your next steps really are going to be looking for when those registration windows open to look at the classes you can sign up for. Okay, we've already done that uh, here at the high school. Okay, I'm not really, I'm not really 100% sure if my daughter has conveyed the message the counselor or if the counselor quite understands because there really wasn't very much available for my daughter she's going into her sophomore year in dual credit uh, from what I could see on the list so is there something that you guys have specifically because you had a nice listing there do we go off of that listing that you had in the presentation or where do we go off of I think you call your child's counselor and have that conversation because there isn't a whole lot at the freshman and sophomore level as far as dual credits go. They're kind of prerequisite courses that allow you to take the junior level high school course that would get. Well, and here's the thing is that the counselor told her she doesn't even know if she could get into these prerequisite courses yet because they may be already filled. Have a call for your child's counselor. Absolutely have that conversation. If you want to schedule a meeting with them, do that. Okay. Yeah, anything, that's why we're, we're looking at these two. But anything that helps, all of our schools, again, we partner with 
20 plus schools, all of our schools, all of our high schools do things so differently where, you know, and we do wait to really get that going in the fall year frankly. And also as they get closer to their senior year and graduation, definitely loop us in on those conversations though because that that transition piece from here to PW is this car. Um, no, I left them in the car. The next slide's gonna have the next slide's gonna have email addresses on, so you can take a picture. But um, because that's probably the car. But that um, that piece when they get to be seniors again, we're gonna come to P and W, West Lafayette, Ball State. I so we're planning on half uh, midterm graduation, <coughs> okay. December graduation, so she's going to go right to Purdue here. And again, I can't say it enough. Again, I advised for eight years before I moved into dual credit. So I worked with students. I worked in Chicago. I worked down here. Um, Where, do you work at Crown High School? No, I work at PW. Okay. But so, I mean, again, call those advisors though. As if you know where you want to go right now, call the advisor now. They Again, that's what they get paid to do. They don't like talking to you. That's what they're supposed to help with. Um, and ask all those questions because you want to make sure you're taking classes and maybe I'll send you to the college court there might be other classes that they would recommend so again I I speak for all advisors when I say call them see what they can say to you know kind of help you out yeah. so the Indiana courts are they are they they can come from any school they can come the 30 credits can be combined from PNW I so like Purdue Soviet would accept an IU or an IU tech? They'll accept that certificate that they has all of those. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and it's, to your question, so for the certificate specifically, um, 18 of the hours have to be from the NW because that's just part of that certificate process. Even if you don't do the certificate though, they should accept those credits. So again, the certificate's great. So we're here to talk about it. I don't want to knock that. But if you don't, if, if getting those 30 just doesn't make sense, because maybe there is something else that makes more sense for you to do in your schedule, any institution, especially in state, is going to take your credits. And again, the focus on that certificate is those gen ed courses. So even if you hit 27, you don't get the full 30, you don't get the full certificate, but you have 27 transferable high priority gen ed classes, any institution should take them. At least in state. Big, big asterisk next to that one. <laughs> So they should, but it's not a kind of confirmation. So the reason why I, I just the reason why I put that out there is because my daughter is at IU for me right now, and she's finishing up her senior year of her bachelor's and potentially coming home to finish out her master's degree. But whatever she takes, you would figure at Bloomington, which is the university, right? To be able to then transfer back if she wanted to take some classes at IU Glen, there's still a discrepancy between both, both of those schools. That's the big deal. And that's the weird thing about Purdue too, um, is that we operate under one you know president with different chancellors. You're building a one transcript, but if you transfer from Northwest to West Lafayette, it's a transfer. You have to have someone evaluate your transcripts. It's not a guarantee that the programs are going to be exactly the same in terms of requirements. It's a really I worked, when I mentioned Chicago, I worked at UIC before this, and it was the same thing between UIC and um, UI Urbana-Champaign. It's a full transfer, it's even though it's the same system, it's very overly complicated. <laughs> they can easily get rid of you on email, and they can easily get rid of you on call. If you go to the dean's office, they can't get rid of you. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just ridiculous that they won't accept it. Yeah. Well, here's one thing, and we when we have time, we do go into our schools. We show kids how, because again, I get phone calls all the time, like from parents. I decided I'm not going to play. Play. It was a student from here a couple years ago, actually. My daughter's going to play volleyball in college. Um, it's English 104. She's in right now at Crown Point. I don't think I'm going to pay because it's not going to transfer to where she's going. So hold up, let's look. So this is the <laughs> Core Transfer Library website. I just use, and like I said, I know you guys have classes with IU, right? And let's say this girl is taking English 101, well, it's 131, let's say here. And then she's going to Ball State. This shows you how it's going to go into Ball State. And all the Indiana public universities are on there, and a couple of private. So it's actually really fun. So, you know, when the kids start, like, oh, I'm taking some IB Tech classes too, and they start putting those in there. So you can you kind of see how that works. So that's a fun little website too. If you can't get the whole certificate, but you know you have a couple classes, you can look at this as well. Transfer in the gap. Transfer in the gap. Yep. 
Like I said, it's really fun. A lot of people don't know about it. Um, it, it it's we were out here just a few weeks ago and we sat with a student across the hall. We pulled this up because he was going USI? Yeah, yeah. We pulled this up to see what the course was going to count as and we went to that website and pulled up his plan of study so we could figure out if it was going to count. I mean, it really can kind of help navigate so that process. So he even called his mom right then and he's like, hey, can you pay? It does transfer. So. All right, what other questions do you guys have for us while we're here? Or are your brains just spinning right now with everything? <laughs> What is the cost for these classes? That's a great question. So the state is the one that decides the cost for these. So for Ivy Tech and Vincent's, the state says community colleges, you can offer everything for free. So, but for us, public universities, we charge, um, we have charged $25 a credit hour. So for like that three credit English class, speech class, it's $75. Or if your kid is free or reduced lunch, it's free. So again, some of you are like, still, it's $75. It's almost $300 if you wait until you're in college. So it's, it's again, the big cost savings for sure. I wish we could say zero. Everyone is zero, but <laughs> the state doesn't let us do that. But like, you know, hypothetically speaking, let's just say, you know, you have a student and they're not allowed you to take all of those courses or that full spreadsheet that you provided, right? And they decide, you know what, I'm just going to do your basics, I'm going to take your core, I'm going to do your speech, I'm going to take a math, I'm going to do a science and keep it simple, I'll take four classes, you know, take my 12 credit hours, and then take those on with me. That is also acceptable, it's yes. not a full requirement that in order to, as you stated, and I just want to clarify, it's not required to do the full on academic and work. Yes, and that's why I think we try to make sure that we talk about, again, I keep saying like all these other pieces almost more than we talk about College Corps because again, the certificate's great, the intention of the state is really there to help make sure that if you know you're going to another in-state public school that they're going to transfer us that block of 30 credit hours, but if they don't, they're still going to get all those credits and that institution's still going to evaluate them the same way. So it's, it's uh, I always say, I don't know if you guys were here already when we talk about it, Whatever is best for the student. That's that's really our our primary thing. We're not here to even recruit you to Purdue, B and W. Again, we're just here to serve, you know, the communities we're in. So yeah, whatever's best for you and your student. So would they just if they wanted to do the dual credit, do dual credit. Mm -hmm. okay. if they wanted to do the dual credit, they just need to be an advisor. Yep. Or like I know for my daughter the AP class, her teacher. Um, yeah, so talk to their um, to their advisor, see what they need to be taking. And again, largely your freshman sophomore year, there's not a lot of options. Um, they really, as you saw, have those very terrifying junior and senior year slides is when those really come into play. Um, but yeah, just make sure as they're doing their schedule planning each year, if that's something they want to do that they're talking to them about. All right, any other questions for us? Yes. And yeah, the slide that we did talk about next step, so think about if you're interested, talk to your counselors. Um, when you can sign up for those classes, please do. And then we were around a lot. I don't know, these guys probably get real tired of us. We were just here literally three weeks ago. We're here um, a lot. <laughs> but if your students are taking classes with us, we come out to help make sure that they are registered for the right classes. We come out to make sure they know how to log into their account, to make sure they know to um, okay. pay for their classes. So have them look for us, reach out to us anytime. This is what we're here for. Um, and again, it can be not just about college work. I really do appreciate that because that's important. Any other questions? Okay. Anything else? your time hopefully we covered again even if you don't do the college core we covered a lot of stuff so if you think of anything later let us know um like i said we're around probably more than anyone wants so if you have any questions reach out and again before you leave if anyone ever needs to talk to someone from the high school you can always reach out to me or your counselor i have business cards here and if you want to grab one at your lab. thank you so much for coming yeah. I appreciate it thank you guys